good evening everyone uh, i hope everyone are on here um this is bhavani i graduated from malaradi college of pharmacy so i recently completed my licensing steps um so today i'll be focusing more about my personal experience and uh, how any tips any quick tips that could help in passing the exams rather than going through the procedure for applying the exam or all the steps that you need there so steps to be a licensed pharmacist and uh, this is a uh, let's keep this an interactive session you can stop me anywhere uh, if you have any questions so let me go through the um, basic steps so fpgec is a certification process uh that includes um credentials evaluation taking a toefl exam and also passing the fpg once you get fpg ec you can get uh, you can do an internship and later you can apply for naplex exam and take a law exam so education credentials evaluation is um something where um the organization evaluates the foreign degrees and they see if the pharmd degree taken um not foreign pharmd degrees are equivalent to the us standards or not for that they take the us uh, the university transcripts and degrees and evaluate them and also convert the scores into gpa so you can find further uh, information about how to evaluate your uh, credentials in the following link and usually it's about 84 at 85 uh, dollars for general evaluation and toefl for passing the toefl uh, you need to require a uh, minimum 22 in reading section 21 in listening 26 in speaking and 24 in writing uh, you have to take your exam in the us and it the score is valid for 2 years um let me give you some quick tips for passing toefl um speaking is the uh, is really a problematic for many of the students those even who pass fpg they take several attempts to pass toefl especially with the speaking session so make sure you practice well uh, it it would be great if you have a speaking partner you can start up with a simple topics like uh, talking about a tree talking about the uh, us education or talk, talking about the family so take the simple topics and practice for one minute with your friends or recording your phone and listen by yourself this helps you uh, be be more fluent and also be more spontaneous and also make and many others also Uh, get less marks in writing um so there are many free essays available in the uh, like on the google so you can practice them uh, ask friends or family members to correct your essays and um i used barrens and ets practice papers i just used practice papers um that helped me to clear the toefl so fpg uh it is conducted once a year from this year and there are maximum five attempts for it so it is divided into different sections like basic biomedical sciences 10% pharmaceutical sciences 33% social behavior and administrative sciences 22% clinical sciences 35% books that i use for my preparation are apha CPR, manager of management, and manager of calculations. Um, so, I most of the time for quick revision of few topics like anti-epileptics or any biochemistry um, cycles, I looked into YouTube videos. I think that's the smartest way to learn any topics that you find difficult in reading and difficult in memorizing. Um, in youtube videos there will be like 15 minutes of a class any youtube video uh, just type in the topic that you wanted to look into there are several out there type in and see 
the YouTube videos between your study. And I, I studied for at least eight hours a day for the exam for two months. And um, uh, practice is the key. Make sure you jo join some Facebook groups and Instagram groups. Um, they would post some questions from the previous FPG papers. Uh, I, whenever I get free time, I just go into those groups and look at the questions. If there's something that I didn't know, I'll take a screenshot or write it down in a notebook. Whenever I get a chance, I just re revise the questions again. Revision is, again, a key. It's so easy to forget, um, especially for a competitive exams like this. There's so much to read, so much information to keep in mind. So revision is the key. You need to at least revise four or five times each topic. That's the minimum. So internship, after passing all your TOEFL, after clearing your FPGEC certification, you need to apply for intern permit uh, with your local state boards, uh, whichever state you are in, whichever state you prefer. So you need to be, you need to get trained for a minimum of hours for, with a licensed pharmacist. Each state has uh, different requirements for the number of hours. I think 1,500 hours are minimum uh, in the states like Ohio, Indiana, and it can, up, it can be up to 1,800 hours. So key things that we need to keep in mind are these exams can be written through your tourist visa. Um, but if you want to do an internship, you can't be on visiting visa. You need to be, have a work permit. Uh, so in order to have a work permit, someone has to sponsor you a H-1B or you should be uh, in a OPT training or CPT training in a university. So make sure you look at your visa, talk to your university or ta uh, talk to someone you know in the US. Uh, so uh, try to find people uh, through LinkedIn get some contacts of the pharmacy and make sure you are you have a clarity with the visa that you wanted to do internship. And also a few states allows to write maps during the internship. Uh, you can if you go into the if you go into such states, you can save your time. You can simultaneously do your internship and prepare for your NAPLEX. Uh, Texas is one of those states. So after the, you're done with an internship, internship can take up to a year. So uh, you will be have you can sit down for the NAPLEX exam. Your, the maximum items are five. You can take any time in the year. And the material that I used is Rx Prep. Uh, that's really really helpful. I haven't studied anything other than Rx Prep, and. Uh, also practice papers there there is a uh, practice papers for rx prep from the rx prep um, if you buy them they will give you some practice test and a mock test um, if you just practice those questions and read the uh, uh, syllabus from rx prep i think it's more than enough for naplex mm. Law exams, uh, you have to review all the federal and state laws that are associated. Um, federal law would be the same for everywhere in the state, but state law is different from state to state. You can get the latest information from the pharmacy boards, the state pharmacy boards. They can email you the material. Um, so make sure you read from the latest one from year to year, from month to month, information can change. So make sure you are lead, reading the updated material for the law exam. So to become a pharmacist in the US, you need more time. You need to um, be patient. It takes time. It is. It takes money and it takes tremendous hard work. So make sure you plan it well. Um, and uh, 
do hard work, have a plan, just work according to it. Um, so I graduated from um, Pharmacy College in India in 2016. I I worked as a um, um, assistant professor uh, for a few months, and later I came for masters. So during my work in the college, I was preparing for FPG. I completed all my application process there in India itself, and. I, and I was ready to give my exam after, as soon as I came here. So uh, when I gave my exam in 2017, FPG was conducted twice a year and I can give TOEFL after my FPG. So uh, I gave my exam in October. Uh, I passed in December. Later, I prepared for TOEFL and gave the exam. I had a, a difficulty in finding internship um not all the pharmacies or not all the companies retail pharmacies would accept students uh, we need to contact as many people as much um, um and uh, try to improve networking i have asked several several mem uh, pharmacists for the internship but um i i later i threw some reference from my professor i was able to get into a uh, um, hospital internship. I did my internship in hospital. So in the hospital system, I had rounds rotations in on the floor. I went I went um, along with the clinical pharmacist. I used to round with the doctors, residents here, and also uh, worked in compounding area and worked in retail area too. Um, and also worked as a hospital pharmacist where I used to drug check for drug interactions and look for drug information. Uh, used to assist the uh, doctors in selecting medicines. So I did my internship for about one hour. If, if you get chance, I would ask you to get into some hospital environment. I think it is more, uh, I think in that in hospital, there's so much to learn. Uh, rather than a retail pharmacy. That's my opinion. And um, later after my internship, it took about one year. So after that, I uh, gave my Netflix. I, I, in the meanwhile, I was in my F1 visa. I was doing my master's in health informatics. Uh, simultaneous, uh, after... Um, my master's and my exams are completed at the same time. Uh, as I'm on my F1 visa, I haven't started working as a pharmacist yet. Um, I'm still uh, working as a data analyst, clinical data analyst. Um, so especially with the COVID situations around, I, we the market and the job market is very slow. So I haven't started looking in for the pharmacist positions yet. So how could you manage both MS and preparation for these exams together? And also maybe you might have been working part-time also. So how, how could you manage these three things? Uh, I think it's definitely manageable. Um, masters, uh, you will have uh, one, you, though you'll have just two days of classes or three days of classes, you will have assignments all, for all the seven days. And um, I, for part time is absolutely necessary when you're living here, um, at least for to earn your rents or for food. So I used to um, read at night up to four, five early in the morning, and get up at uh, nine o'clock in the morning and go for part time. And we used to have evening classes, three hours of the classes. So just, I used to make some timetable for me. I used to um, uh, see, uh, I need to, uh, what chapters I have to complete in how much time, one hour for my assignments and one hour for my uh, nap, uh, FPG preparation and part-time job. And later again, one hour for my FPG preparation. So I used to split the time 
um, uh, between um, to just to make myself more engaged. If I just read continuously uh, for exam, I can get easily bored. So once I get start, uh, once I feel I'm bored with in studying if exam, I'll switch to my assignments. And once I get bored with both of them, I'll go and work for my part time. So just the work is the break between the work. Uh, so the two years for me was like that. Now it is open for questions. Anybody has any question they can ask. So were you finding it tough handling these three things together? Or very, how were you able to cope? Means was it really tough or were you enjoying doing It was this? definitely stressful, especially coming to the US, uh, getting along with the people here during the first semester. And the master's program is also completely new. Um, so it was really stressful, um, but you know, I just kept reading. I haven't gave a thought about it much. I just kept reading. I, I wasn't even sure if I could pass the exam, but um, you know, that especially the two months before the exam was very stressful. Um, so just if you are able to manage the time, if you have interest in uh, to complete the exam, um, I think you should be able to do it. It's not something that undoable or very difficult. Uh, if we have interest to clear the exam uh, for this year uh, without any postponement, that you will be able to do it. You are able to manage your time. So it looks like it is a conversation between you and me. Okay. So if any of the participants have a question, you can ask. Anyways, I don't have any plans of becoming a registered pharmacist in US. This session is for you. And what I like with your journey is only when you're really committed, you will do it. So I know many of my students initially when they were in India, they, their goal was to become a registered pharmacist in US. But they went there, they were they are in US still for last three or four years. They did not even apply for exam, forget about taking them. So with you, what I liked was you started apply, applying right when you are in India and started preparation, went there and immediately gave the exam. So I think that is the way it will work if you really want to become a registered pharmacist there. So otherwise, if you think I let me go there and then see, you might not even take that step. Yeah, planning is very important. The way you want your two years or the way you want the five years that you you have in your hand, uh, how you want to utilize those five years is very important. Um, especially with the current scenarios, we don't know how the visas would be. And we are not 100% sure we can settle here in the US. But whatever we have in our hands, we need to be we need to give our hundred percent. You can give, you can do your exam this year. Then just go prepare, sit for two months, continuously read for your exam, and get it done. Just don't postpone it. So, Shagufta, I think you can unmute and ask. I could just see some questions, uh, uh, question on screen, but you can unmute and speak. So, good evening, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. I wanted to ask what you do major, uh, what what was your master's in? My master's in health informatics. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, Pawani, why did you wanted to do master's in health informatics? Or how did you choose your program for master's and also the university? Um, I haven't uh, thought very much for the master's. My focus was FPG. But uh, all the pharmacology and toxicology um uh like anything any masters related to the pharmacy wasn't interesting me because all those things are already uh we covered it we studied about them i don't want to repeat the same and moreover um during those days people used to um, uh, health id career so if you're able to 
get into health. I think that's a wonderful career to start with in the US. Uh, Taking into all the scenarios, um, I just um, went with health informatics. But with the health informatics program, I was able to uh, get a lot of knowledge on how the US health system works and um, how the EHR system here works, the data analysis, how to handle data, um, and a little bit of programming languages like SQL, R, Python. So a tableau for um, graphical representation. I think these, uh, these skills really help you to take your career to the next step. If you have, if you are a tech savvy, and if you have a data interest, um, if you're really interested with your uh, data analysis, dealing with the data, getting into what insights are there in the data, I think health informatics is a wonderful course. And if you have a license, any medical license, and also some. Uh, knowledge in informatics, data analysis, you can have a combination, uh, you can have a job that have a combination role. Uh, if you go into the LinkedIn and see, see different positions for the pharmacist in the US, you will find pharmacy informatics, pharmacy data analyst, even those roles require a uh, license. Ma'am, so in uh, a gen in general situation uh, condition like without COVID, mm -hmm. how long would it take to become a registered clinical pharmacist in US? If you are able to complete all your steps uh, within time without any delays, uh, as FPG can offer you once in a year, one year for FPG, and um, uh, later one year for internship. In and that again depends upon uh, the state you live in. And preparation for Netflix, you can take it for uh, two months and NPJE two or three weeks of preparation. So uh, so in the, by considering all the worst case scenarios, it can at least take up to three years for you to become a registered pharmacist. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. I think I have a question here. Um, so there is a difference with a master's degree along with a PharmD certificate to become a clinical pharmacist. So to become a clinical pharmacist here, we need to complete the residency program. Residency program is of two years uh, program. It is like um, PG in India, post-graduation for doctors in India. They would pay here, but the problem is uh, Interna I did not see any international student doing residency because of the visa issues. If you have a work permit, if you are uh, on H4 dependent, or if they sponsor your visa, you are able to do the residency. But um, usually, if you're an F1, um, doing residency is not possible. So whatever you do here, just keep in your mind um, the visa and the money that how much it costs and the time that it takes. I think these three are very important to keep in our uh, calculation. So in general, the life here is very mechanical, especially when you are coming on F1 student, student visa when uh, you, you don't have anybody here. Uh, First thing, you can be very focused, and at the same time, you'll be far away from your family. You'll be missing your family, but that's okay when you, when you are determined to do it. So uh, everything here is time. Time is money. Money is time. So when you are spending some time on something, make sure you get um, you are benefited with it. Even you're spending time in masters, make sure you're improving your skills. Uh, it's not not just reading or passing the exams is important here. You need to develop those skills, uh, especially when you go for an interview. You need to have those skills um, to crack the interview and at the same time a uh, little bit strong at your technical aspects. Whatever you do, it can be a health informatics or pharmacy or something. Whichever you take, whichever, if you are doing an exams, just 
be dedicated to it put your 100 percent you will definitely get be successful um and when you are coming here you should be able to talk to people more make some friends in the facebook or in the linkedin try to have professional connections everybody has their story uh, you can learn a lot from them uh, whoever passed the exam or uh, who just try to connect with as many people as possible and talk to them um, if you are able to connect with 10 people, at least one would reply for your questions or um, one can help you. So make sure use the LinkedIn, the social media in a right way. Connect with the people, connect with the right people. Um, you know, utilize your time, especially farm D 60 year and, af and two years after the farm D. I think they are very important. If you uh, plan in a right way, you will be successful in whatever way you want to be. Uh, sure, I can share my contact details. I can send you my email. Uh, if any questions, you can ask me. And also you can, I can, I will share my LinkedIn profile too. You, you can ping me in the LinkedIn too. Apart from the clinical pharmacist, there are various other jobs for a PharmD student. Is the pathway, pathway to secure the respect to job is similar to this one or does it have any other pathway? I did not get your question, Sumatya. Can you explain me? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, like in the PharmD student, like they have a lot many there is a lot of scope for a pharmacy student in abroad, Mama. So, like apart from the clinical pharmacist, uh, like there are various other fields where a pharmacy student can secure a job in the health sector. Yes. So uh, you want to know about various other fields? Oh, uh, like yeah, yes, ma'am. So once you get a license. Uh, uh, as I told you, if you want to be a clinical pharmacist, you, you need residency. And apart that, you have a pharmacy informatics and also retail pharmacy, hospital pharmacies, compounding pharmacies. Okay. So these are a few other pharmacists available, um, and they will be readily taking uh, immigrants too. So um, I think there are many more options. Uh, you can also work in um, in this, uh, drug information companies uh, for writing the manuscripts. Um, and also you can go for teaching side. You need to do PhD for that. There are several other options uh, with if you have a PharmD license. It's not just a clinical pharmacist. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're welcome. Any other questions with uh, exam resources or exam questions? Ma'am, you mentioned we need to have PhD to be a, uh, to get into teaching. Mm -hmm. the, does the PhD have to be from US or only, or can it be from India as well? When you, I think it should be from the US because when you are secure, when you wanted to secure a job, uh, obviously. Doing PhD here uh, would be more weightage than doing from other countries. Like if I study masters from India and apply jobs here, the there are less chances for me to get. I would say it's less chances rather than uh, not getting it. So definitely there is less chances if I do my masters outside the US and applying for the jobs here in the same way for the PhD. Okay, thank you. So what are your plans for upcoming future? So what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Do you want to continue as a data analyst or look for a pharmacist position? And a few years down the lane, what are your plans professional in, in professional journey? <coughs> uh, so my plans, um, I haven't uh, came to a concrete plan yet. I'm just still thinking. I'm hanging in there whether I need to work in a hospital setting or whether I want to settle in a 
uh, informatics side, uh, making my career strong in informatics, data analysis, and settling as a pharmacy informatics personnel or pharmacy data analyst. I think it, it takes a little more time for me to decide, uh, but uh, I'm looking into any of these two, either get into a hospital, work as a hospital pharmacist, or uh, get into a informatics side and be a pharmacy informatics personnel. Um, because after taking health informatics, I, I was a little curious about how we build models to get some insights from the data, especially after COVID, data analysts post, posts have increased. If you see in Google or if you look into the LinkedIn jobs, there's several data analyst positions available. I think uh, I would choose either of one, but I haven't decided it. So the exam resources, um, I bought it a hard copy for my uh, Netflix exam, but for FPG, I got a soft copy, but I took printouts of it. So for FPG, I did not buy anything. One of my seniors gave me soft copies, so I took printouts and read. But for Netflix, I had to buy a book. It costed around $200. Any more questions? So the exam pattern of the Netflix, um, it has a multiple questions. It has a, we just a question we need to write an answer for it, matching and matching and uh, true or false types question. So for my Netflix exam, I got several questions from the calculations, just calculations. Um, so especially for the Netflix, managing time is very important uh, because all you have is calculations. If you don't, if you are not able to get the right answer, if you're not able to do the calculation, it is natural that we spend more time with the with single question. Um, so make sure when you're writing an Netflix, you manage your time well, um, because most of my friends, even for me, I I was rushing. Uh, during the last minute of the exam, I had like several questions to be completed within half an hour. So as it has many calculations, so make sure you are using your time appropriately. Um, for taking exam, it costed around $600 for Netflix and about $1,700 for my FPG exam. I am pretty sure rates now have been increased. Uh, I'm not up to date about those costs. You can get all the information from the NABB blueprint. Um, so just Google the NABB group, uh, blueprint and look for the rates. I'm not sure about the current rates, but for me it cost around $700 for FPG and uh, $700 for my Netflix. Um, Loans, um, you can take loans here, but you need someone who can give you surety sign. You are welcome. Hello, madam. Yes. Uh, thank you, madam, for your so much uh, uh, very informational session. I came to know a lot of points with from your session. Actually, I have basic doubt. Like, is a hospital pharmacist and clinical pharmacist? What are the variation? Or what, what varies in the duty set in a US ma'am? As you said, uh, after completing NAPLEX, you can become hospital pharmacist. But for uh, becoming clinical pharmacist, you you need a PGY one and PGY two residency also. So, what is the major difference in hospital pharmacist and clinical pharmacist as per duty wise or uh, etc. Sure, that's a very good question. Um, hospitals here, uh, the hospital setting here is a little different from what we have in India. So in India, we'll give uh, doctors give prescription to the patients 
to the inpatient patients and they would get those medicines or the nurses would go and get those medicines and give the doses to the uh, patient but in here in the us uh, each uh, hospital has its own inventory the pharmacy inventory uh, the inpatient uh, setting has its own inventory the hospital pharmacist will look into the inventory and make sure all the medicines are available for whole the hos whole hospital because they are going to supply all the medicines and all here are electronic health records doctor puts in the order the hospital pharmacist cross checks the order again um in the electronic health record before he approves the medicine and make sure unit doses are discharged for the patient for example if the patient has to take a metformin tablet during during 2 pm the hospital pharmacist would send the dose at 2 pm for the patient so he makes sure all the meds are reached to bedside to the right patient and also cross checks for any interactions uh, for iv bags uh, they will do a customary bag for each patient you know some patients have uh, decreased potassium some patients have decreased calcium so they would uh, make the iv bags suitable for that specific patient so there will be a iv pharmacist inside who would um, see um, like preparing those iv bags with the required ions and especially working in iv you need to be very good at calculations and make sure um it it matches the osmolarity of the blood uh so iv pharmacist should be very good at calculations and work with the work closely with the technicians make sure there is no any infections and in like uh, bacterial contamination in the iv bag so um because of the differences in the hospital settings we have in the us and in the Uni in the india the hospital pharmacists would send the medicines to bedside patient make sure uh, the make sure the drugs don't have any interactions and make sure it's the right for the patient again like cross checking again the physician and uh, answering the questions from the nurses and also from the doctors and preparing iv bags and sending them looking into the inventory and whereas a clinical pharmacist clinical pharmacists works on the floor with the patient hospital pharmacists uh, wouldn't go and talk to the patient but clinical pharmacist goes out and talk to the patient take his medication history go rounds with the doctor uh, and ask any questions during uh, like uh, answer any questions the doctor asks during the rounds and also plans for patient discharge meds along with the doctor um even the clinical pharmacist checks for interactions anything and suggest any alternative meds for the doctors um so clinical pharmacist works very close with the patient and doctors but hospital pharmacist will be sending some uh, will be sending like uh, will be working as a background and sending all the medicines cross checking so did i answer your question was it clear definitely thank you no i i have another doubt like after as soon as we complete naplex and the lab exams uh, we can directly get into the hospital as a hospital pharmacist or do we need to acquire uh, inter experience like one year or two year experience or should we need to work as a community pharmacist in retail hospitals i mean sorry retail pharmacies there are no such requirements like uh, for clinical pharmacists you need residency that's a requirement for hospital pharmacists there is no such requirements even a grad students if even a newly graduated students can join as a hospital pharmacist they would train you for 3 or 4 months and uh, i think the 3 or 4 months training along with your internship experience would be helpful uh, to become a hospital pharmacist but for clinical pharmacists um, they we need residency any other question dinesh uh, as as my last question 
actually yeah. i also want to clear the netflix and i also want to work as a clinical pharmacist uh, mm-hmm. but my last question is after uh, getting a hospital pharmacist after after started working as a hospital pharmacist after gaining the one or two years experience uh, can we apply for a pg even we will uh, we will complete that pg and I, we can uh, work as a clinical pharmacist is there any chance like that no? yes if you are able to get into hospital and do work as a hospital pharmacist there is an another option called non traditional pgy1 and pgy2 so this non traditional pgy1 is uh, you'll be working as a hospital pharmacist and few months in your job you will be rotating with the clinical pharmacist and you'll be working as a pharmacy resident you'll have the pay like for the pharmacy resident the pay is less it's it's like $50,000 per annum for hospital pharmacists it's like $100 $100,000 per annum if you are able to do a hospital pharmacist if you are working as a hospital pharmacist and you can choose this non traditional program non traditional pgy1 program and you will have the same pay as you have it for hospital pharmacist and you can also continue you can also finish your program but it takes longer time if you if you are directly joining as a pgy1 resident if you are able to complete it in one year uh, you need you'll be completing it the pgy1 in two or three years as working as a pharmacist working as a hospital pharmacist did i confuse you i know ma'am actually but clear clear picture thank okay. you ma'am thank you so much you're welcome ma'am once we get the license is it easy to get into the residency programs uh residency programs are highly competitive here um it's very hard uh, even the ho- number of seats available for doing residency are less especially for immigrants like us we need to think about the visa um usually uh a uh, hospital doesn't sponsor a uh, visa for residency that's a usual norm but if but i'm not 100% sure like i w- i wouldn't say no one would sponsor it you may have one in 100 but usually uh, they don't sponsor visa in residency that's a major concern and it's definitely a competitive uh, field getting into a residency it requires a lot of efforts a lot of people work and you know a good resume good experience good internships so it 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 is a competitive area so if we have gotten the license but we're not able to get into residency then what are we supposed to do like what are the options residency is required only for clinical pharmacist you have a option of getting into a retail or you have an option of getting into hospital pharmacy compounding pharmacy so res- residency is required only for getting as a clinical pharmacist but if we want to get into a clinical pharmacist only pharmacy only um i think uh, without residency it's highly highly difficult to get into a clinical pharmacist role because there are several people the us citizens uh, like it's nowadays it's not like past 10 years or past 15 years where there were only few pharmacy schools and only few pharmacy graduates in the us but today there are several pharmacy gra- uh, schools in the united states the citizens here itself are going into pharmacy school there are several graduates and there is a high competition out there there is a high competition with any kind of job but uh, especially for the clinical pharmacist as i told you as we don't have any sponsorship it is very difficult for an immigrant to get a residency seat uh, once you get a residency seat you need to work for 2 years uh, like you need to uh complete the course for 2 years pgy1 one year and pgy2 for specialization if you are able to do that you will be a, a clinical pharmacist but usually for immigrants this could be a problem because of a visa status and also uh it's so natural that people would 
give preference to the citizens here because they don't have to um, uh, spend extra money for our visa sponsorship. If we are standing out from them, like if we had so much of experience back in India, we did great uh, paperwork. If we are able to uh, contribute a lot to their organization, they would take you. But, um, you know, um, so it is very difficult because of the visa sponsorship. As I told you, any field, you go, you, go, you get into any field in the US, just think about uh, three things, a visa, your time that you're going to spend on it and the money, how much you're going to spend and how much you're going to earn it back. So even for US uh, citizens, it is tough to get PGY1 and PGY2. That is what I heard talking yes. to a few citizens in US. So basically yes. what Bhavan is trying to tell you is it is extremely difficult for someone outside US. But that is required only if you want to become a clinical pharmacist. If not, getting licensure is good enough to work in retail pharmacy or hospital pharmacy. Yeah, here it's not just the talent or the scores that you have. We need to take into consideration all the scenarios and try to choose the one that is most apt for you. So maybe one last question we can take, or if there are no questions, a couple of you can give a feedback and then we can end. Last question. Yeah. You know, during your presentation, when you were talking about the visa issues, I lost connection. Can you please repeat that? Uh, during the internship, please. Is it about the internship visa? Yes, yes. Like how, uh, what are the visa requirements? So for, uh, as I told you, yes, for we example, like move to US we comment, uh, on what visa we need to be uh, yeah. saying something on that lines. OK. So for exams, to write and clear exams, uh, you can come on uh, visiting visa, and you can do that. But if you wanted to do an internship, you would definitely need someone sponsor you the work visa, H-1B visa. Or you get some work permit doing F-1 visa, uh, like coming on F-1 visa and doing internship on your OPT or CPT. So you have two options to do internship. That's one is one F-1 visa or coming on H-1B work permit visa. Does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am, it does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specialization is like next steps after you get the license. License is like a very basic thing. Uh, all the pharmacists here would have it. So a specialization is like um, you need to do it along in your residencies. Um, the PGY1 is like general um, general medicine type. And... PGY2 is where you can choose your specialization, like oncology or transplant or um, like uh, pediatrics or geriatrics. So PGY2 is where you can choose the specialization. And apart from that, there are some board certifications also, which you, which give you uh, like a specialty kind of degree there is yes. a board called board of pharmacy specialties and i think they offer 12 different certifications in 12 different areas yeah you have such uh, certifications uh, but for specialization into these uh, specialty fields you need to do pgy2 yeah. so any feedback in canada it's uh, canada is completely different story um, the exams there is different. I'm not sure about the Canada. I'm sorry, Pinesh. Yes, I received some scholarship um, for my MS program. Um, so if we need to take uh, three courses for each semester, you know, so for one course, the university covered me. The fee, it was about $25,000. Uh, it almost took about $25,000 for my master's.
masters in IUPUI. Yes. Uh, then yeah. overview of the timeline. So even if you go into USA for a masters or PhD, um, then you write the NAPLEX and FPGE exam, and then you mm -hmm. have to apply for residency, and then get PGY one, PGY two, then do that, and then you'll be registered as a pharmacist. Is this is this time? No, no, no. Uh, if once you complete your NAPLEX and law exam, you would be a registered pharmacist. Uh, in order to in order to do a residency program, you need to be a registered pharmacist. Then you can apply for residency programs. Then you can be a clinical pharmacist. So once you pass your NAPLEX, once you pass your law exam, you will be a um, registered pharmacist in the United States. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. So now I figured out a way of encouraging students to ask questions. If I ask them to give a feedback, then they come up with a lot of questions. So I will try this <laughs> next time when I do a session. I understand you might not uh, get in multiple, like many questions right now, but you can, if you have any questions with your exams or in regarding study material, I would share my email with uh, Dr. Karthik and he can pass it on for you guys. Can so email. actually, few people like I'm not finding fault with them. So all they wanted was material. Okay, <laughs> nothing else. I so understand. Material, I was like, was... I was one of them when I was there. So material, anyways, you can get. But talking to few people who have already cleared exam will give you much uh, more information than any material can give. Material is. So I was anticipating someone said, "Is it soft coffee or hard coffee?" <laughs> so up coffee. Next, next question came. Did you share that with us? Uh, I, can, I have no problem sharing those material, but it's they are outdated. It's like 2017 material. I don't think it would be useful for you now if I share though. Um, yeah, so especially in India, I think we can stick to any material which is 10 years old. But in the US and Canada, what Nimin was also telling, right? So we did a session, similar session for Canada. So mm -hmm. within months, a lot of things change. So you have to read the most recent material and not the older one. Yeah. If you if you join groups in the Facebook, like FPG, NAPLEX groups, they would uh, post some, uh, like post regarding selling their materials. They would sell it for half of the price or sometimes free of course. So try to join those groups and see what kind of posts they are posting it. So, Use the social media and right yeah. way. Yeah, so thanks for your time and addressing all these students. Definitely, I think they got a lot of clarity on how to proceed. And if someone I think are really, really sincere and they're really committed to do it i don't mind connecting to them uh, if you're available okay uh, and apart from that actually we spoke a couple of times last time when we talked to shreya shreya connected me to bhavani and we had a conversation a couple of times so she is open to help our last interaction was regarding the health pro di we wanted to take her feedback on our product and our idea uh, so she was really helpful all the insight she gave and gave us a little more information uh, information than we than what we already knew. So thanks for that. And no, I'm more questions? than happy to help you guys. I know I came from the same shoes. It is very stressful while you're planning to study abroad, preparing for the exam, because you have spent a lot of money until now, and you need to spend more time and more money to reach some goal in your life. I think it's it's worth it. It's worth it. Don't hesitate if you're committed. Uh, just work hard. And if you want more information, I'll be more than happy to help you. So someone can unmute and give feedback. So she's not like a 60 year old lady who is talking to us. She's <laughs> one that finished Farm in 2016. You can relate to her very easily. Similar kind of colleges from our own state in the sense Andhra and Telangana. 
RLs, you can <laughs> consider all families as one state, maybe. So, if someone can unmute and give a feedback, that will be great. Ma'am, I wanted to thank you for the insight that you provided us with. It was very detailed, and we did feel really comfortable asking even like very min minor questions. Uh, given that you are like very, in you came from a position similar to us. And, uh, and thank you for your time and all of the information that you've provided us with. And hopefully, like in case we need anything, I hope we can reach out to you. Thank you. Definitely, yeah. Just, uh, I know at this phase, you'll have multiple questions. Try to connect multiple people and ask uh, as many questions as you have. You know, no question is a dumb question. Just feel free, ask them. And it doesn't matter what the other person thinks about you. You need to have the right information with you. That's that's what the that's what matters, and that's the that's what we need by the end of the day. Yeah, I agree. But one thing I wanted to add, add here is you you should be really serious before you ask, not just for the sake of asking or getting some information. So once they see that enthusiasm or real interest, I think they will definitely support. Especially I do that means I maybe I am wrong sometimes, but I try to assess how serious the student is about that question. If I feel they are serious, I spend half an hour to one hour talking to them and explaining in very detail. But if I feel for some reason, if they are asking just for the sake of asking, I just give very basic information, five, ten minutes. So just That's commit true. yourself. We can definitely find people who can help. And I wish to see at least maybe two or three from this group to clear all those exams after say four years and we will have a bigger pool of people who can help out. so yeah so thanks all for joining and we can i think end thank so, you so thank you bhavani okay thank you dr uh,